Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Right then how to estimate the sediment this is a very important because there are certain reservoir in the world which got filled up at the first fill up itself because of improper sediment estimation this reservoir sedimentation there are two types of sediments one is bed low that means huge boulders which are rolled by the water and bringing it at the site like rolling sliding hopping these are all the different ways on which the bed load is transferring from one location to another location the second one is suspended sediment ssl sometimes coarse medium sediment to fine sediments will come as the suspended sediment when there is a flood water it will carry even the medium coarse and suspended sediments right that's why it's a, it's a different brownish light brownish color right that is nothing but water flowing with sediments so i have to estimate this bed load separately and suspended sediment load separately there are several empirical formulas available to estimate this bed load and suspended load we will see that separately right thus as i said the sediment load consists of two categories suspended load and bed load the suspended load which remains in suspend generally fine sediments and carried away by the river to the delta the suspended load in the stream is measured by sampling right take a 1 liter of water filter it find out what is the sediment trap in that and then weight of the sediment to weight of the sediment and water it's a percentage in ppm the data on suspended load measurement and corresponding stream discharge is called as sediment rating curve if it is sediment simple rating curve we call it is a relationship between discharge and a stage okay but here it is relationship between discharge and sediment and that is why it is called as sediment rating curve the correlation between the sediment load and the discharge right normally it is plotted in a logarithmic paper have to find out what could be the sediment when the discharge is larger and a larger at a site the bed load now we will see one by one the bed load or the particle which is moving on or near the bed this depends upon the velocity of flow which uh, makes the sediments to roll slide and hop there are certain analytical methods right first method was du bois right it's a sand moves in layer subject to uniform tractive force right where this depends upon the shear stress as well as the bed load rate of transportation right per load per second per unit weight depends upon the shape and size of the sediments cs as well as the shear stress of the channel boundary if the channel boundary is very smooth then my sediment rate will be larger if my average shear stress is la very large and critical is also very large then there will be a less tractive force so more tractive force so the sediment may not roll right then we have shields formula right that also depends upon the specific gravity as well as the shear stress of the bed material right just to show you that the sediment load is estimated mainly based upon the shear stress of the channel boundary critical stress as well as shape and size of the sediments as the specific gravity right no need to remember all this formula but remember that what are all the parameters used to estimate this sediment load then sediment deposited in the reservoir all the sediments carried by the river gets deposited the large suspended bed materials they get deposited at the mouth of the reservoir i told you so this is the dam when we stop it because of reduction in velocity of the flow the huge core sediments gets deposited at mouth of the dam and that is also called as delta not only at the downstream side you have delta the upstream side in the dam also you have this 
delta right so that is called as delta at the beginning of the reservoir smaller particles remains in suspension for longer period and because of their high density than the water then what happens they settle when the water stored is for longer and longer period they are used to settle at the dead storage area that is fine sediments okay these are all the sediment these are all the zones of sediment deposition right coarse medium sediments and fine sediments will be floating and then which will go then the sediment deposition is almost called in three types first one is top set top set is nothing but my delta which is larger size sediment and extended up to the back water of corals right the second one is pore set pore set is nothing but the face of the delta where my uh, medium size sediments gets deposited it is the transition zone having steeper slopes and decreasing in grain size bottom set is nothing but fine sediments that deposits at very um, low quantity in the dead storage right so knowledge of sediment deposition is essential for designing this reservoir dead storage volume right because the there are several factors which governs this distribution and one important factor is you can see that in earlier figures we said that this is the dead storage and then live storage and flood storage if you see here the sediments are getting deposited in the live storage area when the sediments are getting deposited in the live storage area my live storage goes on reducing over the period of time so dam is there but after 50 years or 60 years my entire live storage will be filled with dead store with sediments that means the volume of water available for my usage goes on reducing with increase in sediment deposition in the reservoir that's why reservoir estimation is very important but these are all the factors which governs the places where the sediments gets deposited also called as distribution pattern of the sediments it depends upon the slope of the river length of the river constriction in reservoir size of the sediment capacity inflow ratio reservoir operation if i do a frequent operations they used to get rolled if i am not doing frequent operations then all the all sediments gets deposited then vegetal growth in the water spread area river inflow pattern if it is daily flowing sediments will be less but if it is flowing only during monsoon period sediment will be more than sediment load in india himalayan range reservoirs will have more sediment than our deccan and southern dams because the erosion at the himalayan range is larger then shape of the reservoir also governs how these sediments are deposited then outlets what type of outlets how the outlets are operated these are all the ratio these are all the patterns which governs the distribution pattern out of all these things i have classified this into three characteristics that called it as the factors influencing the rate of sedimentation rate of sedimentation is nothing but what is the rate at which the sediments get deposited in the reservoir this is three characteristics governs the first one is the catchment characteristics second one is the reservoir characteristics and third is the sediment characteristics suppose if we will see one by one watershed characteristics what is the watershed characteristics not the physiographic features it is the land use and land cover if it is with high density forest cover then the impact of rain on the soil is very less so it is very less eroded okay if it is a barren land there will be more erosion and second one is the type of soil if it is an erodible soil even light rainfall can erode more quantity of soil and bring sediment to the reservoir second one is a good forest area but the forest area is steep slope and it is subjected to land slides then sediments will also be more so watershed characteristics also governs the rate of sedimentation the second one is the reservoir characteristics reservoir characteristics is nothing but how i am operating the reservoir and the sediment content which is coming into the reservoir then the third 
is the ratio of capacity and inflow. Suppose if the capacity of the reservoir is more than the inflow, average inflow at the dam site, that means you are trapping almost all the water coming into the dam. Then what happens? You are trapping more and more sediments. So then that is called as trapping efficiency of a reservoir. How much sediment is incoming into the dam and how much is outgoing? Then what is the ratio of sediments that are trapped? That is called as trapping efficiency of a reservoir. We will see that in detail. Then the last characteristics which governs the rate of sediment is sediment characteristics. That like sediment size, texture, shape. Suppose if the sediment size is very large, then they get deposited at the mouth of the reservoir itself. Suppose if the sediments are always in coagulant form, then whenever we open the gate, it goes away. Right? So these are all the set characteristics which governs the rate of sedimentation. Now let us take this trap efficiency which is one of the most important governing parameter in estimating the volume of sediment deposited. What is this trap efficiency? Trap efficiency is the proportion of the incoming sediment that is deposited or trapped in a reservoir and is often expressed as the percentage like T is Vi minus Vo by Vi. That is volume of inflowing sediment load to the volume of outflowing sediment flow. How do they do this? We have to estimate what is the sediment incoming and sediment outgoing through the canals. Sometimes it may not be possible to measure everything. Then we used to estimate this trap efficiency and there are several methods available to estimate this trap efficiency because this trap efficiency depends on several parameters like sediment size its distribution, like what you do in geotechnical engineering, soil size distribution, right, using sieve analysis. Then the time and rate of water inflow into the reservoir, the reservoir shape and size, location of the outlet structure and water discharge schedules. C401 water resource engineering, we are seeing one of the important water resources creation, that is dams and reservoirs. In that we are looking how to estimate the sediment dead storage level, which is based on the trap efficiency of the reservoir. This trap efficiency is also estimated every time, every year for large dams, so as to estimate how much is the volume of water reduced due to sedimentation. That is why this trap efficiency studies are very much important nowadays in water resource management. This trap efficiency, as we see, its ratio between the incoming sediment to outgoing and to the incoming sediments, or how much trapped sediments are getting deposited in the reservoir. When it's not possible to measure and we do the estimation. So while doing the estimation, the characteristics which governs this trap efficiency process are majority two. One is the settling velocity of sediment particles and retention time, right? The settling velocity are incoming sediment characteristics, whereas the retention time is the reservoir operating characteristics. For example, we will see one by one settling velocity, incoming sediment characteristics which governs this is the particle size distribution of the settling velocity, flocculation control. These two governs the character, governs the settling velocity. The retention time is again divided into two important characteristics. One is the inflow characteristics and pond characteristics. The inflow characteristics which governs this is the runoff volume, peak discharge and the base flow. Whereas pond characteristics, which is nothing but how this reservoir is operated. Like reservoir topology, either it is a dry pond or semi-dry or permanently ponded. What is the surface area, storage area relation, shape, outlet dimension, outlet type, right? the location of the outlet, initial storage volume, the property of the bottom of the surface, vegetated, non-vegetated, stiffness and the height of the vegetation. So this trap efficiency estimation was the subject of the study from 
30s and 35s after formation of large reservoirs why it is very useful because this trap efficiency is is useful to estimate the life of the reservoir it is not the structural life the hydrological life right so what is hydrological life we can divide that into different life that means whether the stored water can be economically usable right so that is why people call it as useful life useful life is nothing but the period in years during which the sediment deposit does not affect the intended primary use of the reservoir right that means the dead storage is sufficiently designed so the sediments are not seen in the outflow of the dam like either it's for irrigation or power production or drinking water sorry, drinking water purpose and the end of this useful life is when the basic minimum capacity falls below the dead storage right and then it will fail to meet the minimum basic demand until that period is called as useful life then usable life is the reservoir can continue to serve see still it has come only up to the dead storage but still i can draw the water and use it after trip so such period is also included in the use life and it is called as usable life the reservoir can continue to serve some of the purposes though to limited extent even after expiry of its economic life okay so that is called as useful and usable life economic life is the point of time at which the effect of various factors of this depreciation of sediments change requirements time discontinued along for risk uncertainty that means it is that the the amount of money earned by supplying the pure water is becoming uneconomic then that is called as uneconomical life decent life is each and every storage is fixed assuming 100 years 50 years that's the dead storage volume suppose if the volume of the dead storage volume of sediment deposited is more than the dead storage we say that it has reached the design life full life is the number of the years required such that the reservoir is completely filled with sediments which may not be that means no water can store in the reservoir right so there are different steps in estimating the useful life of reservoirs one of our research carried out on this is three different steps we carried out first one is to estimate the sediment yield from the catchment area right when i want to study the volume of sediment eroded from the catchment area i need the aerial data of that catchment if i want the aerial data then i need to go for a remote sensing map so then use remote sensing and gis environment estimate the erodible catchment area so that will help us in spatio temporal uh, amount of sediment incoming to the dam right so this fisac model is very important model right uh, which will help us to uh, estimate how much sediment can be expected for different rainfall intensities of the given catchment then the second one is estimate the trap efficiency of the reservoir because some x quantity is coming how much of this x quantity is trapped in the reservoir if all the x quantity is trapped then you can easily estimate what is the economic life or usable life of a reservoir sometimes for large reservoir it is almost 99.99% all sediments gets deposited there are conventional empirical methods uh, then we modified such conventional methods developed in other countries to suit to our indian reservoirs then now people used to estimate or measure this trap efficiency how they measure they will measure the volume of water stored at every year not just estimating from the area elevation storage curve they will do the sounding depth in radial direction from the dam face throughout the dam then there will be a change in the contour level because of sediment deposited that means you have to redraw actually the contour maps area elevation curve then the difference between previous 
area elevation curve and current area elevation curve will give you the reduction in volume of water stored because of sediments from that also people used to estimate the trap efficiency once i have this measured volume of water for different levels for longer period or volume of sediment deposited is measured for longer period then we can apply our data driven techniques to estimate this trap efficiency then the third step is to estimate the volume of sediment retained and then from that we can estimate what is the useful life of a reservoir i will give you some of the conventional model right this conventional model rs is the annual mean sediment deposited is a function of c by i almost all empirical formula all depends upon this ratio of capacity in flow let just remember which is the most important parameter which governs this trap efficiency not only in the east part of the country western part also several people have developed this trap efficiency estimation okay like taylor's method jill's approach is the most important method um, widely used throughout even today now by different dam authorities to estimate what is the reduction in the capacity of the reservoir for a given time period delta t after estimating the trap efficiency right so it is function of the reduction in the volume of water stored is function of the annual characteristic weight specific gravity trap efficiency and time period and specific weight of the sediment deposited how we have modified this to suit our indian condition and uh, we estimate uh, this these are all different characteristic different uh, trap efficiency or useful life given by jill for different types of sediments if the dam is having coarse what is the useful life if it is having medium sediments what is the useful life if it is having colloidal what is the useful life and finally we also incorporated certain characteristics to estimate this is called jill's method right the main idea here is to prevent this sedimentation why we need to estimate it's a threatening figure 90% 99.9% of the dam sediments incoming are trapped that means every year we are losing certain amount of volume where water is to store to sediment so water cannot store so my capacity of the dam goes on reducing so i need to prevent that sediments incoming into the dam right so some of the methods are catchment development authorities by reducing the control by constructing check dams gully dams contour bunding trenching agronomical afforestation right vegetation growth these are all some of the methods to prevent this reservoir incoming sediments like in in stream measures we can do check dams and diversion dams or while planning the reservoir you can plan such that the watershed area doesn't have area prone to landsliding or so soil erosion then construct the reservoir away from the stream which is having large amount of sediments then while designing the reservoir depending upon the measured sediment for a certain period provide the appropriate area or volume for the sediment deposition then design an appropriate outlet such that the sediments will get flushed off very recent uh, technique this one for outlet work is the orifice spillway type earlier the surplus water used to go above the dam nowadays people are designing the orifice spillway that means the flood and sediments gets discharged from bottom of the dam so that the outlet will work as a dual purpose one is for flushing the sediment as well as for releasing the surplus water okay so then dam rising in stages instead of rising the dam continuously you do stage by stage thereby you are creating the obstacles for the sediments coming in then reservoir operation you have to control the sediments by appropriate operation don't keep the water for longer period then every every sediments gets deposited then 
give way for the peak flood so that the coagulant sediments will go away from the reservoir. These are all some of the curative measures. Curative measure means, so by all this means sediments is still depositing, then manual excavation, dredging, right? These are all, all sluicing with hydraulic and mechanical agitations. These are all some of the curative measures to remove the silt deposited in a reservoir. Right? So these are all some of the self-studies, all water resources words related to dam, air, barrage, reservoir and sediment. And also related words like planning, designing, construction, operation, management of these dam reservoirs. So, dear friends, we will wind up here about this reservoir engineering.